For the ADOC case presentations, I would like to introduce Dr. Brian Mason. Dr. Brian Mason is ADOC's physician executive and has been working with our solution in his real life clinical practice. Dr. Mason. Thank you very much, Dimitri. I'm a neurointerventionalist by training and I've been in practice for 23 years and I've been advising uh, ADOC since uh, 2020. I want to share some of my experiences uh, over the last two weeks actually using the ADOC neuromodule. We started using ADOC uh, neuromodule mobile app in July of this year. And I want to review some of the images that I've done over the last two weeks actually. First case is a young lady that presented emergency room with a right hemispheric stroke on a Saturday. Uh, she had uh, newly diagnosed atrial fibrillation. Uh, the uh, module identified immediately an LVO and notified the radiologist. Obviously that shows up in their desk, desk workflow. And uh, I simultaneously, I get notified on my mobile app and I'm able to do a quick uh, immediate adjustment of the images to identify the right M1 occlusion, as you can see on the MIP images here. On the uh, right-hand side, you can see the CT perfusion volumetric images uh, that show a holohemispheric penumbra in the right hemisphere that correlate to the MCA occlusion findings. It does not show any core infarct. Uh, and expected, uh, as expected, there's a diminished uh, perf uh, penumbra and the hem at the vertex due to collateral flow from the ACA in this young lady. And we went into the operating room immediately and pulled out a three centimeter clot out of her brain with a reperfusion catheter. You can see occlusion here with full recanalization. Uh, did a 24 hour follow up CT scan of brain on her. You can see there's a very small stroke in the external capsule. This patient was in the ICT for one day and was in the hospital for one day. And because we were able to intervene so fast on this patient, she was able to leave the hospital with outpatient rehab uh, in three days. Um, since we are a comprehensive stroke center, we also get our fair share of intracranial hemorrhages. So I wanted to review the uh, intracranial hemorrhage module from ADOC that we've been using. Uh, we do get a fair amount of trauma patients uh, and it's been very impressive to see the um, detection abilities of uh, ADOC for these very subtle skim subdural hemorrhages that we get that can be very hard to detect on a routine day so that we can actually follow these patients appropriately in 24 hours, make sure there's no worsening and uh, make sure that we don't miss any findings. Uh, we Not only skim subdurals, but it also works in other compartments of the brain, obviously. Here we have a left temporal tip hemorrhage that's blended in with the bone. ADOC module is able to separate the bone from the hemorrhage and identify the hemorrhage very easily. Uh, here we have a very subtle particular hemorrhage in a minor trauma in a patient on oral anticoagulation due to history of clotting disorder, uh, presenting with subtle paresthesias, no motor deficits. And the radiologist was able to identify this immediately and notify the ER so the Coumadin can be reversed immediately. Uh, this is a very a subtle case of an interhemispheric hemorrhage in this patient uh, that presented emergency room with uh, moderate headache, which was actually controlled with medication she got in the ER. CT scan brain was performed in this patient because she does not usually get headaches. And the uh, ADOC neuromodule was, was able to identify these subtle interhemispheric hemorrhages along the, and, and some um, bleeding going along the uh, fox here, which is very impressive. You can see patients got some enlargement of the ventricles here. Uh, this was related to a ruptured anterior communicating RA aneurysm, which we later found in the CT angiogram. Uh, because of these findings, um, you know, the patient had an immediate CT angiogram that identified the anterior communicating RA aneurysm rather than being sent home after control of the headache. And here's the CT angiogram, uh, the, I'm sorry, the three-dimensional imaging of an angiogram that shows a multi-libulated irregular aneurysm uh, that uh, if, if went undetected, more than likely would have re-ruptured within the next two weeks and could have been catastrophic for this patient. Uh, at the uh, worst and at the very least would have caused a prolonged stay in a hospital with rehab, inpatient rehab. Rather, we were able to go in there, embolize that endovascularly, and patient stayed in the ICU for 12 days and then went home uh, after that. So this is a very obvious uh, lesion. This is, we're not gonna miss this obviously, but the story with this lady was again, she's on Coumadin, uh, has not been feeling well, has had headaches uh, and had some speech problems. Uh, with a urinary tract infection. So her primary care physician sent her to the outpatient imaging center uh, for an imaging done on Friday at 4.30. Uh, the, this was immediately notified to the radiologist on call that was on call for emergency uh, imaging 
and he was able to notify the primary care physician. Patient came to the uh, ER, she was on Coumadin and her Coumadin was reversed uh, and then she was observed in the hospital uh, and went home on Monday uh, rather than potential for blooming hemorrhage that presenting with emergently with a possible craniotomy for, for evacuation. So this was handled non-invasively, uh, again, due to the fact that ADOC was able to identify this and prioritize reading and notification of the patient.